Kalaroga Shark Media. Here's a weird one. And hi, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. They're doing a crossover between Abbott Elementary and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah? Rob McElhenney teased it on social media on Twitter. He shared a photo of him and Charlie Day with Quinta Brunson. He posted another photo of the trio with Danny DeVito, Tyler James Williams, and William Stanford Davis on his Instagram story. Both Abbott and Sonny take place in Philadelphia, and both are owned by Disney. That should be interesting, right? I I imagine it's an episode of Sonny. Who knows? Time will tell. From Golf.com, your home for comedy news, Cooper Manning, the other Manning brother, was playing golf with Larry David. Cooper said, you want things to go wrong where Larry David gets mad and aggravated because that's where he shines. So, you know, even on the first green, he had a putt and he started yelling at it, you know, too hard, too hard. He flustered his caddy. His caddy told him, you know, it's a little uphill. He hammered it and he's like, don't ever tell me how hard or how soft to hit it unless I ask. (laughs) Will Ferrell getting a lot of good buzz for his documentary, Will and Harper. And they talked about how Will, when he first started on SNL, the cast members didn't think Will was particularly impressive. Harper Steele said, The first week we went downstairs to lunch, and there's something about the two of us. We were just on the same wavelength in a lot of different ways. They all thought Will Ferrell was a dud. I just knew Will was not the dud. Will said, You were an ambassador for me to be like, Nah, don't write him off. He's actually really funny. Sometimes you look back at these casts, and people go on to bigger things and become bigger names than maybe they were at the time. The 1996 cast of SNL, Chris Kattan, Daryl Hammond, Tracy Morgan, Will Ferrell, Jim Brewer, Sherry O'Terry, Molly Shannon, Norm MacDonald, Tim Meadows, Anna Gasteyer. It's a pretty good cast. In the documentary, Will says, If you ever scratched your head and said, Why did Will Ferrell make that? There's a good chance it was with Steele, describing Steele as having a super weird creative sense of humor. Louis Black was on with Boston Public Radio talking about politics and said, how many jokes can you make about this insanity? Every special I have a joke where the Democrats do this, the Republicans do that. Honky honk, quack quack. It's the same over and over again. Now it's just gotten a little crazier. Is this really a farewell tour? Lewis said, I'm not going to do 150 shows. He might occasionally open for his comedian friends or do one-off performances or appear on The Daily Show. Black recalled a flight several years ago where he ran into Don Rickles, who was then in his 80s. Black recalled saying to his own opening act at that time, I'm not doing that. Black is 76 and says, going in front of an audience where people like you more than you've ever liked yourself, it's pretty remarkable. If he needs the buzz, he'll open for Kathleen Madigan, they're good friends, and do live shows of his Lewis Black Rantcast podcast. And if that's not enough, he says, I'm going to go on public transit and yell at people. Hashtag six seasons and a movie. You know what would help? If I had actually put the new story in my script, I only have the headline here. (laughs) A little behind the scenes for you. Why don't you edit that out, Sean? Because it's more fun this way. Yvette Nicole Brown said the community movie is going to happen, but the script is being reworked after she signed on to reprise her role as Shirley. She told The Wrap, I think it's being reworked, but we've all read an entire full script, so a script exists. I've heard that we have the big credit in L.A. that gives you money to make the film, so we're definitely going to be doing it in L.A., Joel McHale took responsibility for the movie's delay, telling GQ that fans can fully blame my schedule. That followed speculation that it was Donald Glover's schedule holding up production. Yvette said, for a minute, I wasn't confirmed, so they have to now change some things, because I am confirmed, and they can now change some things for Shirley's character as well, so it's going to be a really good time. It's just now trying to get all these puzzle pieces together out of everyone's schedule. We were scheduled to do it, and then the strike happened, and now it's like trying to figure out when is so-and-so done with their show, and when is so-and-so done with their movie? When is so-and-so off tour? It's all those things that we're trying to get together, but it's going to happen. We're going to do the movie, and we're all on board to do it. As for the script, she says a lot of it's probably going to change, but it's really funny. It's very irreverent. It's silly. As for that L.A. tax credit, Community the Movie, that seems to be the title, was announced as one of 19 projects that will benefit from $51.6 million in incentives from California's film and TV tax credits program. Contact your local politician if you have an opinion on that. Lawn Medicine and Alan Strickland-Williams have announced the release of Alan's debut full-length comedy album, Ran Through. It'll be out October 25th. Ran Through is a culmination of ASW stand-up since he started, Up to the night he recorded, the album is filled with absurd, dark one-liners, as well-structured pieces about the celestial bodies that hang in the sky above, his Florida roots, relationships, dating and being single, parenting or lack thereof, vasectomies, and guns. I like that because it didn't follow the copywriting rule of three. That was like seven. Love it. ASW excels at crash jokes about sex, drugs, and residual trauma, the kind of jokes that you can't help but laugh at while also relating to just a bit much. 
Born in Texas, raised in Florida because my parents really wanted to do a number on me. ASW now lives a totally normal life in the small, humble town of Los Angeles, California. Mandel is one of Vulture's comedians you should and will know. Worst show ever, Mandel says. I've had my fair share of awful interactions with audience members, and most of them are my fault. My worst work to date was when I used to tell a joke about my 600-pound life. It was a newer joke at the time, and I'm trying to figure out how to get into it, so I decided to unnecessarily ask the audience who watches the show. This lady responds... Instead of saying, you look like the type of person who would watch the show, considering you're the target demographic for TLC television programming, meaning she was a mid 30 suburban woman with a mid 30 suburban husband, I just say, you look like it. And everybody in the audience, including her, thought I was calling her fat. Now, that wasn't my intention. So it takes me a while to process while everyone in the room gasped and started mugging me. I hear a comic from behind the curtain say, oh no. And then it clicked. I spent the rest of the set apologizing to this lady and was able to squeeze out a big laugh at the end and got off stage. Whew. Everything should be cool at that point, but then a comic later on in the night decides to bring the situation back up and says, ain't nothing wrong with being a big girl. Big girls make some noise, and now her husband is full-blown red and ready to fight by the end of the show. <laughs> Afterward, I saw her crying. Oh, no, Johnny Mac, you just laughed. You're such a jerk. I don't know. I didn't know where the story was going. Mandel says, I tried to apologize again, but of course they weren't having it. Rightly, she bought a ticket to a comedy show in the hopes of having a nice laugh, but got met with a bunch of folks calling her fat. Truly a rough night. I think about it at least twice a month. What comedy opinion hill will you die on? Mandel said, I don't believe in funny is funny. While I do believe a lot of the best jokes speak to the human condition in a way that every person can understand and identify with, that does not undermine the idea that we are unique with our own interests, sensibilities, etc. So sometimes we're not going to find the same thing funny, and that's okay. A person can identify as a music lover and very much so hate country music. I'm that person. Best advice, worst advice, best, have fun, worst, stop yelling. Hey, are you in Cleveland? I bet you are. After church, why don't you head on over to the 17th Annual Cleveland Comedy Festival. Yes, I'm shouting out Deacon Mike. Everyone say hi to Deacon Mike. Hi, Deacon Mike. Deacon Mike, this story is just for you. The Cleveland Comedy Festival, November 6th through 9th, Wednesday through Saturday. 50 comics in Cleveland for the four-day event. The festival will be centered at Forest City Brewery, 2135 Columbus Road in Cleveland. Maybe I should go because I could pick up the bar tab and write it off for us. Yeah, let's hang, Deacon Mike. Additional venues and market. No, it's legit. If I go to a comedy festival, that's a legit expense. I didn't schedule it at a brewery. What do you think I'm doing here? This is a business. Steve Guy is the executive director of the Cleveland Comedy Festival and says the annual event shines a spotlight on Cleveland's incredible comedic talent. We're proud to partner with other venues to offer curated open mics and local showcases, giving fans a glimpse into the different levels of stand-up comedy. Kicks off Wednesday, November 6th. With Cleveland's best female comedian, Tabitha Jones. She'll be at Spotlight Cleveland. You know the place, 8701 Madison. Some of the other shows include Roast to Battle Cleveland and Your Arts Suck, a roast of fine arts. And that's your comedy news for today. If you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it too. If you would like this thing without commercials, check the link in the show notes. Short version there. Five bucks a month. Do it. See you tomorrow.